The seventh Dev Diary has just gone live, and for once I'm actually on time with it. That's probably because this one focuses on where it all began for me some 10 years ago with Mask of the Day. It was a series I started up in the first month of Payday 2's update cycle, and it was the original idea that got the ball rolling for what was my hugely unprofessional and underproduced channel at the time. Being completely honest, if it wasn't for Payday 2's mass customization system, there would be no Noli channel today, so I'm obviously taking great interest in how Payday 3 is going about its business. So far, we've seen very limited cosmetic options in the initial beta, and even the Gamescom build had a fair few limitations in place, so it's nice to see a few more of the detailed mass properly in this diary, and hear the design philosophy around building up mass rarity in the shop. To properly clarify a statement made in this dev diary, all cosmetics appear to be directly purchasable at the moment for in-game currency, and so when the devs talk about rarity, they don't mean to hint at a gacha or even loot drop card system. Instead, the internally tracked rarity of an item seems to correspond more to its price in the store or potential to be sold for C-Stacks, which if you remember is the convertible currency filling the role of Continental Coins from Payday 2. I actually think it's quite easy to discern between the two at just a glance in the menus, with some masks appearing to be bare-bones faceplates that look cheaply made, whilst others are these ornate constructions that feel fully customised out of the box. I think this idea is intended to lean into the heisting fantasy of upgrading your luck as you become a more prolific criminal, but in all honesty, I can see myself leaning towards these lower rarity options as they're much more open to personal expression and choice of customization. Speaking of those patterns and colours that allow you to truly express yourself, whilst you can't set each mass material type anymore, you can do a whole lot more with the colouring of each individual section of it. My feedback would be to still allow us to move patterns around the mass freely, but I can understand why this hasn't been added at launch, as so many of the stock patterns are designed to fit with the mass silhouette precisely. Hell, this one even looks a fair bit like Clover's base mass pattern from Payday 2, so get your conspiracy notepads out now. Overall, it seems Payday 3's masks are a little more down to earth than what we've got used to in Payday 2, but that hasn't stopped the art team from pulling out a few crazy ones to spice things up. Unfortunately, even these look great in game from my time with the Gamescom build, and won't have you overstretching your disbelief when you see Chains dive into the bank dressed as a kitten. Of course, we already knew about the preset weapons, a concept that has been played around with in Payday 2 via the exclusive sets that allow you to run a fully decked out weapon with fixed attachments and a playstyle in mind, as well as a detailed weapon skin that can only be accessed by playing with that specific weapon type. I've found these presets to generally be fairly well made, and have been my go-to when on test builds as it means I don't have to spend time considering the attachments I want to bring along. At the moment, these are going to be purchased with C-Stacks on launch, but I think we could feasibly see them evolve into microtransaction options in the future. This is all old news, but what we've just learned specifically as of today's dev diary is that there will also be preset masks that can be purchased from the black market with mass-specific customizations that cannot be acquired through regular means. For example, I used this baseball mask during my Gamescom session, but the special variant we see in this footage comes signed, believe it or not, by the one and only Almir Listo, at least from what I can tell from his recent community post. We also learn that we can purchase materials, but only for specific masks via this preset system, such that if you want a golden Dallas mask, you're going to have to save up for that purchase this way, instead of just getting lucky with pattern and material drops. I really like how this ties into game progression, and anticipate these will be some of the most expensive and hardest to obtain items in the game, however I do think it comes at the detriment of our own creativity. I'm not sure a Mask of the Day series could have ever got going if the absolute best mask in the game could have simply been purchased outright, as seems to be the case in Payday 3. Back in my day, creating something even half decent looking required your own ingenuity to craft within Payday 2's old rigid system. It's a double-edged sword in that Payday 3's masks clearly just look better and are more tied to a fair sense of progression instead of requiring hundreds of jewelry store runs, but at the same time it does seem a lot more hands-off in terms of player input, so I hope more is done in the future to allow for complete player individuality. Moving on to a quick look at outfits in Payday 3, these will play a much larger role in the aesthetic look of heisters from the get-go as the game is built around them from the ground up. This means no awkward clipping or conflicts with heavily armoured setups. But overall, I think these outfits look amazing, although it will be hard to pry me away from that base wolf look when so much time has evidently gone into designing the promotional heister suits. Ned Flanders Dallas though is a fairly easy sell for me at least. The topic in this episode that surprised me the most is this out of the blue discussion of Payday 3's new heister face models. As we know, their original designs based loosely on aged up versions of the Payday the Heist faces and we've been told this was a creative decision. 
From a business perspective, with live-action payday content on the horizon, and the actors who will take on the mantles of Dallas, Hoxton, Chains and Wolf still up in the air, I can understand why the team has gone for a more neutral and adaptable design instead of sticking with the old live-action faces from 10 years ago. Where I do disagree is how the gang has been aged up in Payday 3. The game is set 10 years on, yet somehow Dallas and Hoxton have managed to look even younger. I do agree that these faces appear more realistic, I enjoy the additional scarring and facial animation that gives them infinitely more personality than what we're used to in Payday 2, and even think they've nailed chains in particular, but I still have minor gripes with the other three. Dallas looks amazing, but far too young. Hoxton has been altered the most, and whilst I love the return of the chemical burns, he'd be hard to even recognise without them. And Wolf does land the sociopath look nicely, but with his new voice actor actually bringing a younger sound to him, it's strange that he looks like he's aged about 20 years and is completely unwashed. I think they will grow on me with time, I know Hoxton already has, but for now, there's going to be some teething pains whilst we get used to these new designs. Fortunately, the crew spends so much time behind masks, I don't think it's going to be a deal breaker for anyone, and the overall aesthetic improvements to Payday 3 are such that overall, I'm left with little to really complain about. It is interesting to hear the guys at the end concluding that they're still looking for new potential avenues for cosmetic customization. I really wonder what ideas have been thrown around so far. All I can think of is maybe equipment skins or escape vehicle customization being discussed, but who knows what these guys are cocking up. Let me know if there's something I'm missing here in the comments down below. And with only one more pre-launch dev diary to come, there won't be that many questions left to answer shortly. I know today there's some sort of event going on in New York, so I'll be keeping my eyes peeled for that. You probably should too, as it might just be the start of a massive NYC spree. You never know. Thanks for watching this video. Patrons already have access to a new skill build deep dive I've created, if that's of any interest to you. Take care. Challenge runs and lore videos are on their way. They just keep getting waylaid by more and more Payday 3 news. In any case, I'll see you all very soon. A huge thank you to my dedicated Patreon backers. If you want to join this crew in Going Infamous, check out the link below and pledge as little as $2 to see your name in the credits, or get 24-hour early access to future videos and vote on upcoming content. Take care, I'll see you all soon.